Welcome back, everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Corvette as Garage. House of Fast Cars. And Fast Bikes. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I had multiple series of problems on our, on our last episode uh, with the intercooler installation. Well, you know, there were some strange things that were going, going on during the filming of that uh, uh, episode, and then I started thinking about it. I had too many issues going on, so there had to be a cause to it. Well, I came to the realization that I got a gremlin owning my Corvette. Well, gremlins were uh, discovered back in World War II by the British pilots. They noticed all kinds of series of problems going on flying their aircraft during the war. Engine problems, uh, electrical problems, just problems that uh, that should not have ever happened. It was because of them damn gremlins, okay? Well, I got one. You see, right now, that son of a bitch is taking, he's, he's looking at me, and he doesn't think that I can see him. You know why? Because I'm wearing my cheap sunglasses. Well, they're not cheap sunglasses, they're Ray-Bans. But because he can't see my eyes, he thinks I can't see him. But you know what? I can see that son of a bitch. I'm about ready to take care of that little grit bastard right now. And that's how you take care of a freaking gremlin, little bastard. Auxiliary fan options. Well, that's a trick. That's that's a touchy subject. Back in the day when forums were alive, there used to be some knockdown, drag out fights over that subject. You know, to the point to where we had to escort the uh, member off the damn uh, forum. As you recall, my Corvette came stock with an auxiliary fan, but because of the radiator, uh, it is now not going to be able to fit in between the condenser and and intercooler Ooh, that's not gonna fit but we do have a solution and you can use this for your car too uh, it works on any car today I'm coming at you from the office slash gym <clears throat> and today is probably about the best day I felt in two weeks <laughs> but I'm just still a little bit too cold in that garage to start filming so I'm filming from this office and nice warm 75 degree warm office <laughs> that's the way it's been anyway <clears throat> and speaking of fast bike my intentions were to break out uh, a badass machine towards the end of 2023 unfortunately that didn't work out that way the i got behind on the corvette so uh i want to start uh, speeding that process up here uh, from this episode on so we can get that other uh, project back out. There's some things that need to be done to it. And you're going to like this one. There's been things done to that bike that was unheard of back in the day. Uh, there was nothing. Money was no object when it came to this machine. And it had one, per, one purpose uh, in life. And that was the smoke of the Harley Davidsons. So. And it's going to be a treat. Now, with that being said, uh. As you recall, uh, we had an uh, issue with the belt uh, in the last episode. Uh, unfortunately, the belt ended up being too short. Uh, I didn't realize it till uh, it was too late and in the process of trying to install the belt, my beautiful polish uh, uh, supercharger bracket was uh, damaged in the process. So I ended up scratching it up pretty good. Uh, we did apply a fix to it, so that one's taken care of. The next problem, the inner fairing fender. I had test fitted it once prior and everything seemed to be smooth that time, but this time around uh, when I went to actually install it, I found that the interfering was interfering with the upper control arm. So I had to uh, 
pre-drill new holes to the interfering. So the next issue we had was the intercooler, uh, which really wasn't an issue until I actually installed it and realized that uh, something was not right. The auxiliary fan was just not going to be able to be uh, fit between the intercooler and the uh, condenser. So that turned out to be a slap in the face. Well, with that being said, the installation of the auxiliary fan uh, got aborted. There was nothing I could do about it. Couldn't fit it in there, so I had to throw that option out. So as you can see, I was batting 100 for problems. So we're mo we moved on from that, and we ran into another problem. The uh, air scoop didn't have any pre-drilled holes in them. Go figure. But that was an easy fix. So after being hit hard and put away wet, we had to stop the uh, film, unfortunately, and uh, come up with a new game plan for uh, running a fan uh, in between the intercooler and the condenser. So, And we did come up with a solution, and we'll get to it right after this. <laughs> Welcome to the candy shop, folks. My favorite place to be, where we do product unboxing for the Corvette or Harley-Davidson. Now, I buy all this stuff out of my own pocket, so help me out. Like, subscribe. Uh, maybe I'll pick up a sponsor. Who knows? You know, that'd be nice. But anyway, uh, moving on. Now, the first thing is the mass airflow sensor is now connected to the intercooler, which is in between the bumper and the uh, condenser. Um... So that uh, uh, required uh, additional wiring. Well, Procharger did supply wiring uh, to get the job done, but I had issues trying to find a male connector um, so I can make it work. So what I ended up doing for the meantime, uh, actually is a little bit easier, cost me a little bit, but uh, I ended up going over to Michigan Motorsport and they had some harnesses already made. So unfortunately, they didn't have the exact length that I needed. So I ended up buying two 24 inch harnesses. So, um, which is fine. You know, it's, it's a little bit more than what I need, but uh, it will get the job done. Now, the second thing is uh, the solution to installing a fan. Well, since I can't install the auxiliary fan uh, due to the beefy three row radiator I got, um, I decided to get another fan and attach it to the condenser. That should give me the room that I need um, to uh, get that additional fan, auxiliary fan set up. Now, I, I did some research and I, I decided to go with a company called American Volt. Looks like they, they've been around for a little bit and I, I did some research on them. They don't really have bad reviews. Uh, they have good reviews. Um, there was a few of them in there that uh, didn't like it for whatever reason. Uh, I think that one of, one of the complaints were that uh, they didn't feel the fan was strong enough. But what I ended up finding out, uh, uh, well, well, before we get to that, the reason why I went with this kit because it came with everything that I needed. It came with the mount kit uh, to the condenser. It also came with a relay setup. Um, and I opted to go with the sensor, so um, I replaced the sensor on the passenger side between six, a cylinder six and eight, and I went with a 180 uh, uh, degree sensor. So, but I'm also going to have a toggle switch hooked up to it as well, and uh, it, it all works with uh, a, a negative ground when the sensor. Uh, activates it grounds out and activates the uh, fan while well, the toggle switch is going to be in the same concept but I'm just going to have the toggle switch uh, hooked up to a uh, ground and then when I flip the switch which is also going to be hooked up to the ground that's going to the sensor uh, it's going to activate the uh, uh, fan and I, I want to do it that way because I want to make sure that uh, I have an on and off uh, when it comes to uh, stop and grow traffic. Now there's the toggle switch right there and the concept of the toggle switch is about the same as the sensor. Okay, I have a uh, ground going to the sensor so 
when the temperature reaches 180 degrees, it activates the sensor, kicks in the ground, flips on the, the uh, fan. This black wire here is going to be connected to the sensor, so it's connected to my toggle switch. And then this uh, yellow wire right here, that's connected to the negative of my battery. So when I flip the switch, the fan comes on. Flip it off, the fan goes off. That's how the toggle switch uh, method is going to work for this uh, application here. So other than that, um, the stock sensor kicked on the 238. Well, the big fan, the one that's on the radiator itself, that has a sensor that's 180. Uh, so when the uh, uh, the second auxiliary fan kicked in at 238. I felt, and I and a lot of people would agree with me, that's a little bit too long. You know, I mean, granted, these cars were were made to run hot because of the EPA compliance issues that the manufacturer were having uh, at the time. You know, but um, I'm gonna run it at the 180. See how that goes. Um, you know, the supercharger will generate a lot of heat, so I think I'll be all right at 180. And if I feel that uh, it's just too early, then I'll go ahead and switch it out to uh, 190 uh, temperature sensor. So, other than that, uh, the kit's complete. You don't have to buy any additional wiring or anything like that. The wiring actually was pretty good, pretty decent size. Uh, uh, the relay is a 40 amp and it has a, an internal uh, 30 amp. Um, and um, it, it, it just, everything just came together, so I, I, it was a no-brainer. Okay, now here's the intercooler and the tubing. The mass flow sensor is hooked up to the tubing on the intercooler. Uh, so you, now you know why I have to run uh, additional wiring. Um, and when I pulled it off the, uh, this last time here, uh, messing with it, the glue actually came apart from the mass flow air sensor. So um, that prevents water from getting into it, shorten everything out. So uh, pretty simple fix here. Now I'm just going to throw on some th uh, clear 3M, uh, which is really good stuff that I use. Uh, does definitely. I also use it for my travel trailer. So it it it's, it, it prevents water from getting in. Uh, and if all, any of you know, you need to make sure when you uh, have a travel trailer that is waterproof. Um, anyway, um, you know, I'm just going to slap it on there. It, it's more function over fashion. Uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to look like it, like it did from the manufacturer. I don't really care about that part of it. Uh, my, my concern is just to make sure that it is... Uh, uh, sealed from any type of uh, moisture or water. Now we did have some damage to the intercooler, unfortunately, uh, when we were wrestling with it. Um, so I decided I like the raw aluminum look, but I decided to go ahead and polish it up to make me feel better about <laughs> scratches. There's scratch on both sides uh, of the um, uh, intercooler. Now you've heard me talk about this before, but I swear by this stuff, Metal Polisher Polish Cream by Blue Magic. And as I've said it before, uh, when the uh, your rag or your polishing pad turns black, you know the uh, Blue Magic is working. Now, once that's uh, done, you just go ahead and, and use a clean rag to buff it out. And as you can see, it's pretty shiny compared to the raw finish of the aluminum it brings it out as well ah what the hell i need the exercise so first things first and it seems like i've done this so many times but uh that top uh, radiator housing cover it needs to come off so i can get to the radiator so now that the uh <laughs> cover is off um i need to start uh, disconnecting the hoses uh transmission lines from the radiator so i can pull that out and uh, get to the uh, installation of the fan. So now that I have the uh, radiator off, looks like I'm gonna have to do some cleaning on that radiator. It's a good thing I polished that out. It should be a lot easier now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put back the radiator housing um, on top of the uh, condenser because I, I have limited space in there. I wanna make sure that I center it correctly and uh, 
that way I, there won't be any issues when I put the radiator back in because we can't have any issues with the when the radiator goes back in because then I'll have to pull the damn thing back out I don't want to do that anyway let's go ahead and take care of that mess so now that I have the uh, housing in place um, I need to hold that fan somehow uh, because I'm by myself so I, I decided to use a bungee cord to hold it in place uh, until I fastened the mounting kit to the condenser now installing two of the zip ties held the uh, fan in place so I was able to remove the housing because I still have to uh, wire in the uh, fan and uh, gives me a better view of what's uh, going on now we got everything hooked up I probably should have checked that and circulation anyway um, let's see how good this fan uh, kicks butt <laughs> Okay, well, the fans seemed like they were blowing the other direction, okay? So, according to the information that I read, that you're supposed to reverse the blades, okay? But yeah, you are supposed to reverse the blade, but you're also supposed to switch the wiring. And that I found on, uh, thank God for Amazon customers, huh? Um, that I found on Amazon, uh, on one of the reviews. And when I switched to wiring, and, it's, and he said he found it on the American Vault's uh, website. So I don't know. I, I looked. I couldn't find it, but I just did it anyway. Um, and sure enough, the fans are blowing in the direction that I needed to be blowing as a push of fan. Wow. I'll tell you. Sometimes, I don't know, some, some of these manufacturers, and not, not, it's not just them, there's all, all kinds of them like that too. They, you basically got to call them to get more information. So, it's not bad. I don't know if it's uh, almost 3,000 CFM, but it's not bad. But it works. Now that we know that the fan works, uh, it's time to go ahead and wire up the... Uh, um, relay and uh, make everything uh, all complete now i'm no expert in wiring but uh you just can't be afraid of it used to, i used to be scared of it but then i decided to rewire a bike one time and uh, it actually came out pretty good so i ended up losing that fear uh wiring uh you just gotta get in there and get dirty and we finish up by wiring the ground wire all the way to the sensor the fan it's completed. The wiring's completed. Let's see, as you can see down there, that's how I have it hooked up. Coming up over here through the uh, frame, there's my ground wire right here to the radiator. And it's coming all. And I ran it along on the fender well and as you can see there is the um, relay and the fuse so it's, the fuse is accessible it's a 30 amp fuse with a 40 amp relay uh, then it got ran down around the supercharger and as you can see this yellow wire right here that is connected to my ignition uh, wire on this relay right there. It's an ignition hot uh, wire. And then I ran it to the battery, as you can see right there. Now, everything's all good. Here is the ground wire uh, that will be connected to the sensor and a toggle switch inside the car and here's what the fan looks like attached to the condenser it wasn't that big of a deal i mean a little time consuming because you gotta uh, rewire the damn thing uh other than that though i think the hardest part was trying to get those zip ties through the uh condenser uh there's a couple a couple of little <laughs> spots that gave me some problems uh, but I got him through. I'll tell you what, though, for a 14 inch uh, uh, fan, auxiliary fan, that sucker blows pretty damn good. 
for a little bastard it is. Well, here I am, back from the dead. Unfortunately, uh, I only was able to do the fan this time around. I, might, I meant to get the intercooler installed as well, but I got sick, and then after I did the fan, I relapsed, so I've been down for about a month, uh, so, but that's all right. Anyway, um, go ahead and click on this playlist over here, and you'll be able to uh, check out everything that I've done so far uh, to this uh, project. Uh, but until then, uh, uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, thank you for watching Orbit Ed's Garage.